Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I have on the bench this week is this little boat and this is what's called a benchy. And what you're gonna wanna do is print this out in every single color filament you have. If you get a new roll of filament, first thing you're gonna wanna do, print a benchy. Now there's no reason to do this, but you just gotta do it. And then when you're done, Make sure you take a real close up picture, even though your print in your opinion looks perfect and post it on every subreddit and Facebook page asking, is there any improvements? This is my first print. Also, make sure you log in and come up with constructive criticism for everyone else's bench. Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print. I mean, it was April 1st, I just, I couldn't resist. So what I really have on the bench this week, if you guys haven't managed to hit the unsubscribe button yet, is my Heiko. Um, soldering iron and I remember years ago when I graduated from my pretend soldering iron to a real one Everyone recommended this guy. It's not the cheapest soldering iron you could get But it is pretty competitively priced and it just does a tremendous job. I've had this guy for over five years I've used it a ton. It's never let me down. I don't even think I've changed the tip on it But you know, it's a pain to lug out to the garage or you know to elsewhere if I'm soldering because you know I have this plugged in on my bench down in my basement and you know, it's just, it's, it's heavy, it's bulky. And for a while I've wanted one of these sort of new uh, fancy cordless or portable uh, soldering irons. The cordless ones I looked into, I know Ryobi makes one. Um, they have their own share of issues, most of it with temperature management. But I kind of was eyeballing one of the TS 100s for a while. And then uh, this guy came along and this thing is really, Cool. This is not a TS-80 or a TS-100. This is the Pine Soul uh, by the Pine 64 group. And uh, I originally saw this on a review from Joshua Bardwell's channel. He does uh, drone stuff. I'll link his channel down below. Check him out. And he said this is the best soldering iron at any price. So I just had to check it out. And it is really, really cool. First of all, it's super portable. This is the whole thing. There's no base to it. Um, and it's even smaller than the the, the Heiko iron um, gets into slightly tighter spots, but it is still really comfortable. It's got like the silicone sleeve over it. Problem is you still got to power it. This thing is not self-powered and it works on either a barrel connector or USB-C. So you can go ahead and get yourself like a, a power brick that supports quick charge 3.0 uh, that it's going to do a higher voltage and this guy will work but you won't get the full wattage. I think this the guy does 60 watts, which is, if I'm not mistaken, actually a few more watts than what the Heiko does. But the way to power this is, and they sell these, these cords. This is actually silicone too, so if you touch it with the soldering iron, it doesn't melt. This has a barrel connector on one end and an XT60 on the other. Well, you know, I guess if you're into RC hobby, you probably have a bunch of batteries with this type of connector. And I do have a couple batteries with this type of connector, but uh, I don't keep them charged up. Um, it's just, and it's not convenient for me to go grab one, especially if I'm working out here in the shop. But I do have plenty of these batteries always charged up. This is a Bosch uh, 18 volt battery. This is their older generation battery. I have tons of these. I specifically chose this one because it is the smallest amp hour one I have. And I want to demo with that, but Rich, how are you going to plug, where's this going to go? Well, that's where this week's print comes in. So here's what I designed. This locks onto the top of the battery. It's a two-tone print and has an XT60 as the output. And I didn't design the, the bottom piece that locks onto the Bosch battery. Um, that I, I just adjusted the design of one that I found on Thingiverse and I'll link to the original design as well um, down below in the description, but I designed this top piece that just sort of continues the same uh, slope here and then inside um, has hold downs for the actual uh, connections that go onto the battery. These are stainless steel uh, and routing for the wires and these are silicone uh, as well. So before we dig into the details of this, let's see how the soldering iron performs because it really, really impressed me. So first let's plug the Heiko in. This guy's plugged in and now to warm the soldering iron up, all I have to do is turn it on. The moment I turn it on, it's gonna warm up and I have this set to 
I believe 550 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's flip this on. You can see how quick it warms up. Okay, so not too bad. Um, and typically, the moment I sit down at my bench, if I'm going to do work uh, down in my basement, I'll flip this guy on first. And I, and I don't think I ever, you know, to be fair, I don't think I ever wait for it. But uh, it's not super fast. It's way faster than the this uh, this garbage one uh, that I had before. But it's not super fast either. And the couple times I have brought it out here to the garage or taken it up to my barn or used it outside, I am kind of sitting there twiddling my thumbs waiting for it to warm up. So let's see how the pine does. Turn this guy off. So again, this is just an 18 volt Bosch battery. And I'm just locking this on top and that's engaging the positive and negative terminals on the battery. Locks on securely. This isn't coming off unless I push the button to unlock it, just the same as a Bosch tool. But let's plug this XT60 in. And when we do that, this guy boots up but it won't start until we push the, the plus button. So I'm going to push the plus button. So this one's also set at 550 and you can see it got there incredibly quickly and it's not a lie. Um, within, I'd say two seconds of this guy reading 550, I've measured 550 uh, at the tip and then it maintains it very well. This is very tight temperature control. I would say even tighter than the Heiko. It responds a little bit better uh, or a little bit quicker, I should say, if I'm soldering something that is like a really heavy terminal lug or something where I am going to be dumping heat into that guy for 10, 20 seconds until the whole joint gets warm enough. Uh, I love this thing. It's, uh, it's great if you're in the market for a soldering iron, period. Uh, even if you don't have one at all, check this guy out. Uh, if you maybe have a bench soldering station, but you're looking for something more portable, definitely go with this guy. It's great. And I got, let me grab, I got an iron holder for this guy too. Uh, I'll link this guy below. I went through a bunch of different iron holders on Amazon until I found one that this fit in uh, really well. And this also uses uh, TS100 tips. Uh, the same, uh, this, this metal tip out here is the same one as the the TS100 irons. And so, you know, there's a ton of tips already out on the market and the software for this is great. That's probably what sets this aside from the TS100 and the TS80 is how good the software is on this. It's open source. You can modify it. Um, there's a number of different uh, other alternative firmwares available. They've got a whole wiki page. All right, I know, shut up about the soldering iron. Let's take a look at the design. So let me get a hex driver and we'll get this lid off of here and I'll show you inside. Okay, here we go. And now that I've taken this off the battery, you can see on the bottom here, there are pressed in uh, nuts. Uh, so as we are taking these fasteners out of the top, we're just coming out of those nuts and those nuts are gonna stay in place. If I take this guy apart, you can see there are two little spacers, one of which has fallen out, one of which is still here. And the purpose of those spa spacers is to be held down uh, on these, uh, the, the stainless steel terminals by these little fingers here. And I did them as separate spacers so that I could print this guy flat on the bed uh, without those, those fingers uh, projecting up and uh, causing me to need to print this entire thing on um, either a, a raft or uh, support. So the entire thing is not hollow, uh, only the section here where we have the, the recess for the locking clip on the battery. It does come slightly past the, the bottom part, uh, these, this base part, and needs a recess up into here to fit. Um, and then the area where the wires loop inside of this. And actually, you know what? Let's just go take a look at the design for this. It's a little bit hard to kind of show how this whole thing fits together. Uh, looking at the 3D printed part, let's go take a look at the design in SketchUp. Before we do that, I did want to show you one of the terminals since I don't have those modeled in SketchUp. This is just a piece of uh, stainless steel that I cut out with some tin snips and uh, bent into the shape where it just fits into this slot 
and then this bent part comes down and fits into this recess in the bottom part. And then I used a rivet uh, to attach a piece of uh, copper sheet and soldered the wire to that. If you've ever tried soldering to stainless steel, it's just about impossible. So uh, the easiest solution here was to just uh, rivet copper to it, which solders incredibly well. You can see how well that wet on there. So, all right, let's go take a look at the design. Okay, so here's the design for this in SketchUp, and the lower part is what clicks onto the Bosch battery itself. And again, I got this piece from Thingiverse. I didn't bother designing this from scratch. Um, SimHop uh, on uh, Thingiverse had already designed this component that clicks onto the Bosch battery. And in fact, they have uh, this bottom component for most of the major brands. I believe there's one there for DeWalt, Milwaukee, um, and a couple other as well. So you should be able to take essentially their bottom design. And again, I'll put that link below um, and then add my top plate onto pretty much any of those lower designs. You might need to adjust like just the shape of the outer edge uh, if you wanna closely follow uh, the part that clicks onto the battery, um, but that should be minimal modification. So taking a look at that bottom piece, I did make one change. The, the nuts that I had in my screw assortment set were a little bit bigger than what the holes accommodated for. So I increased the size of these and the depth of them just a bit. I also a, a lowered just this, this whole plate here, this whole plate just, just a bit uh, to tighten up the fit. I found, at least with my prints, these were a little bit loose on the battery and just lowering this, this, uh, this face here uh, allowed me to tighten that up. And now it's just, it's a perfect friction fit. Feels exactly the same as locking it on to, you know, one of my Bosch tools. So uh, let's see the top piece here again. So we have a full cutout here on this lower piece. And then the top piece just has a small uh, cutout to allow again for that locking tab on the battery uh, to fall into. And of course we have these slots uh, that descend all the way through this piece um, to allow for those terminals here. At this point, let's, uh, let's hide this top portion. So you can see what the top of this guy looks like. So again, hole all the way through. Um, we have the, the four holes for the machine screws and we have the terminal slots. And these are just spacer pieces in here so that we get a nice tight fit down on the terminal material. See, these don't come all the way down to the, the full depth of the hole. They're designed to just give a snug fit for whatever the thickness of the material that you use for the terminals. So you might want to change the sizing on these spacers to accommodate what material you use uh, to make those terminals uh, out of. I use stainless steel. I just had some laying around. I figured it would be a good contact material um, and it's not terribly difficult to just rivet a piece of copper to it uh, for your actual electrical connection. If you had copper sheeting, you probably could just use copper. I was just afraid that over time the copper might start to wear in um, from sliding into the steel contacts on the batteries. Um, and I figured stainless steel would just hold up better. So let me hide these guys and you can see what these look like. So you're gonna cut your terminal material just to basically fill up uh, the full depth of this slot and then have a tab that bends over uh, over here uh, to connect. And this piece of metal here, you're not gonna cut that off. You're gonna bend that straight up and that's the piece that you're going to either solder directly onto if you use um, copper or something that you could solder directly to uh, or that you're going to rivet to um, for, your, for your contact to solder your wires to. So, all right, let's get that top piece uh, back here rid of the battery we'll get rid of this guy temporarily now you can see what this looks like and I left the spacers on there again you can see that those spacers sit proud of those fingers that come down these spacers aren't necessary if the fingers were longer but as I mentioned earlier the problem with that is I wanted this to be a nice flat face that sat on the bed of the printer so the underside of this is the first layer of the print and I wanted the finish on the top, particularly with the, the rounded edge, uh, to be the top layer on the print, just from a texture perspective. I'm picky with that kind of stuff. It might not matter to you. Um, if it doesn't and you want to print this on the, in the other direction, you could just add the thickness of these spacers to the fingers uh, themselves to push down on those plates. And you want to make sure you, you don't want this whole section to be hollow. If you're designing one of these or you're modifying uh, my STL uh, to work for you, uh, make sure the part that clips onto the battery up here is a separate chamber than this here. I originally had uh, this hollow area extending further up and just encompassing the cutout for this as well. And when I had it all printed, I realized that something could fall into here, uh, metallic, and end up then coming down into this section 
and shorting out these contacts. And some of the power tool batteries have short circuit protection or overload protection on them. Some of them don't. And if you overload that battery, if you overload that battery, it could actually catch on fire. So make sure that the area where your contacts are is a separate enclosed area that nothing can get into once this guy's closed up. I also printed a couple different variations of this until I got these two pass-throughs here uh, to be nice and snug on my wires so that they don't pull out. And the wires in those terminals, uh, they come up off the terminals and they just both make a loop and then come down essentially where you see this red center line in SketchUp. So they come up, make a loop, and then exit out of the back. So that also sort of works as a bit of a strain relief because if you tug on these guys hard enough, it's just going to try and tighten up those loops. You're not actually trying to pull the wires uh, off their solder connections. So I think that covers everything for the design, guys. Uh, if this is your first time here on my channel, consider hitting the subscribe button. I do a new video like this every single Friday that briefly focuses on a design I've come up with for around the shop or around the house, you know, that solves some sort of problem. Um, sometimes I focus on other folks' designs as well. So if you've got something really cool you'd like me to check out, um, hit up the contact page on my site, fpfdesigns.com. Uh, also, all of the STLs for this project are going to be available on that site as well. It'll be linked down in the description, along with the various product links I mentioned and the sites I mentioned, like Joshua Bardwell's uh, YouTube channel um, and the Thingiverse page uh, that has the designs for the bottom part of the battery. The Amazon links are going to be affiliate links. Uh, it's a great way to help and support the channel if you're actually interested in anything I talked about. Whether you click my link or you search for it on Amazon, it's going to cost you the same. I just get a really tiny cut of it if you click my link and buy it from there. Guys, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next Friday.